Welcome to the debut episode of House of Horns, the new Rams podcast. I'm Gilbert Monsano, OC Register, LA Daily News, Rams beat reporter, and as always, Victor Corona, Victor producer joining me. Victor, we're here. We finally did it. We've been telling the people there's going to be a Rams podcast, and it's here, House of Horns. I like the name. How about you? Oh, you smell that? You smell you smell that uh, new podcast smell? Doesn't that oh. smell good? Oh, yes, it does. I, I think you're, you're going to do The Rock right now. You smell what The Rock is cooking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it is a new podcast and a new a new background. I like the color here. Uh, I like the, the crown, I like the Rams. Compass on the beat. I, I'm forgetting the biggest part of this, uh, Victor. It's Compass on the Beat Network. We're growing. Uh, Fernando and, and Dan and Dale had their podcast moment yesterday, but today is a House of Horns. I really like the name, especially right now because uh, House of the Dragon, Victor. Yeah, man, this is so exciting. Like, I, I've been waiting for a bu- – we've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now. We're like, hey, when – I keep asking you, hey, when are we dropping this? When are we dropping this? And finally, it's here. Like, I'm I'm so hyped for this because, you know, we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks now. How do you feel? Like, how, do, how does this – like, like building this whole thing, how does this feel for you? It, it, it felt like it was a lot of work to – get this going and just to unveil the, the new show uh house of horns i'm gonna keep saying it uh victor i, I love the name uh, again i love the look of what we have and i guess people shouldn't be too surprised you know they see you and i and fernando and dan and Diego doing a bunch of podcasts for different shows combat compass compass on the beat what's up boats and now house of horns so you knew you knew it was coming and then also the, the biggest thing about it victor is like it felt right during the preseason i know you and I were trying to get our, our reps in, our snaps in, to kind of get the chemistry going, the vibe going for this podcast. And then you start seeing the views. And I, and I know it's not crazy views, but people are watching. And I'm like, okay, they're getting, we're getting some likes here. Uh, I think the first, uh, was it preseason game one or two? Or I forget. I, yeah, for the, the Texans game. Yeah, that one did pretty well. Like the preview, it was like 500 views. And I think it helped that Lance McCutcheon was in, in, in the title. Lance McCutcheon is a very popular guy. And we'll get into it, Victor. But right. I'm just excited to have House of Horns. And, you know, similar to what Fernando's doing, what's up, Bolts? We're going to be having a game preview. So we'll have a Buffalo Bills Rams week one preview with, with a guest. We can't un- unveil the name just yet. A post game show. I know it's going to be kind of hard and hectic because I will be at the stadium covering the game. Well, Victor, you're like, hey, we, we got to get your instant reaction. We got to get some quick thoughts. We got to create uh, some dialogue between the audience and us and, and just kind of get it going. So I'll give you 15 minutes post game show. It'll be maybe it might even be live. It'll be quick. Get out the way. We want comments. We want engagement. We want to build a community. Uh, House of Horns. Again, I love the name. And hopefully uh, Rams fans, Rams Twitter, the Rams community community. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it is, this is a debut episode. You know, I won't call it a pilot because we had the pilots during the preseason, but this is a real one, the real deal, Victor. Yeah, we had our preseason, so now now we're we're we're, we're starting week one here. So I'm excited for that. I mean, we've been we've been wanting to do something, you know. And I'm I just first off, I just want to say thank you for bringing me on. This is such a great opportunity to be able to talk football again, and you know, like especially the Rams coming off the Super Bowl, you know. Cooper Cup, you know, Stafford, all that. You know, we've gone through the preseason now. Now, now we're going into the Bills and we finally get to the big the big show now. Like we're we're here and we're ready to roll. But we before we get to all, to football, let's go over some programming reminders for the people. Let's let them know about what's coming up so that way they, you know, you talked about some of the things we have coming up, but let's make that official for like we we you said that we have uh uh what's up bolt just dropped with uh Fernando and Dan and Dago. We also have we which dropped uh today they're going to come on Thursdays now. So we're, they're going to drop the same day as we do for house of horns. We also have the carne asada show, the second annual carne asada yeah. show, which, yeah. you know, you guys had, uh, I wasn't a part of, but you guys had Derwin James on. Um, and then, and then we have the, the, uh, what else, what else we got going on? Cause I'm like forgetting yeah. here as I'm <laughs> rambling on. Sorry it, about that. It, it's, a, it's a lot, but you know, we're, we're growing here as a network, but we have four shows. So, Obviously, uh, combat compas. We've been already, you know, been running with that one with uh, Triple G, Andy Ruiz. 
Ryan Garcia, and that's doing pretty well too. Uh, so if you're a fan of combat sports, give it a, a like, uh, subscribe. And then for, I think this week, we're, we're dropping this on Thursday. So this week, uh, if you haven't done it, check out the, the interview with BJ Cruz from The Ringer. If you like pro wrestling, he, he, he that guy knows his stuff. And that was a, a great interview. And then in the future, we have a previews for the Nate Diaz fight in, in the UFC world. Uh, we're going to have Canelo, Triple G kind of preview. So, yeah, we have a bunch of content. And, and, and before we get to the 53-man roster here uh, uh, with the Rams, and also I can't forget, regular compas on the beat. That's what got, got it started. Regular compas on the beat still every Wednesday. Make sure to check that out. But before we get to the roster, a quick backstory. Because people are probably like, you know, who's Gilbert hanging out with? Victor, you know, yeah. that's not Fernando. And then Fernando's doing his thing with the Chargers. So we can't really combine both teams. So we separated. Uh, but Victor, uh, you and I are both uh, Cal State Northridge alumni. We were former classmates. We used to work together at the school newspaper. We became friends after that. Uh, we went on different paths. But here we are reunited. Uh, so don't be thinking that we're strangers here just forcing a Rams podcast. So you will see that 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 chemistry, that vibe come through as we kind of do more episodes. And definitely, Victor, you know your stuff about football. Uh, I know it's a learning experience for you, but I definitely know you're going to be dropping some knowledge throughout the whole year. Yeah, I feel like I, I kind of retired and then you pull me out of retirement. Um, but this is this is great. Uh, I love talking sports, especially football. I know people think I'm just a baseball guy for some reason, but I love talk. I, I keep up with the NFL. I kept with I try to keep up with every sport, but especially football season, especially during especially when it comes to fantasy stuff, too. So and you know this. I mean, we've gone back and forth on on fantasy for a while now. So. This is this is awesome, but let's let's get to the let's the fifty three man r- yeah. roster. Uh, what was what was your initial reaction to it? Uh, I know that y- you you kind of gave us some predictions of what might happen, but let before we get to how you did, just give me some thoughts on how you know on the initial roster, the Rams initial roster. Yeah, you know, I guess I'll start off by saying how I got got it wrong with some of the the younger guys you know i I thought they they weren't gonna do and you know i guess you know i didn't think they're gonna you know know, make it based on multiple things and we'll get into it too but you know i told you i wanted to kind of have my first four out kind of thing just like like ncaa uh, march banners and um i got three out of four uh wrong there and that's what hurt me uh you know with that so you know jake hummel undrafted rookie kair thomas hopefully i'm saying his name right kair kair thomas undrafted rookie outside linebacker uh those two guys made it in you know i I didn't have jonah williams in in my in my roster he made it in there he's not undrafted rookie uh so i probably should have you know looked at that better but uh in in, in terms of the three out of the four the the fourth one is uh jake garvey so he didn't make it but he also i'm sure made it tough on the ram so that's kind of my initial reaction like those first four out i got three out of four wrong and that kind of hurt me for a perfect score yeah, no, I don't. I think you're beating yourself up. Like those un- undrafted rookies are hard to predict because you don't know how how you know the team views them. You know, of course, and they're not going to give you. They're not going to tell the media, "Hey, like this is what this is." We really like these kids, and so we're we're thinking of of, of keeping them. You never know with with the undrafted guys, and usually, like when when you have a team like the Rams who's coming off a Super Bowl, you would think they want to keep veterans and. You know, but we also have to keep in mind that they also are heavy loaded and they have big contracts. And so they need to be able to fill some spots with undrafted guys and lay lay around picks. And that's what we got. Yeah. You know, that's actually a good point. You got to you got to get some of these young guys develop and that's how you get better. Uh, But, yeah, you know, my score was 50 out of 53 and some backstory. I counted wrong, uh, Victor. I, I think, you know, I didn't do a, an official story at the OC Register LA Daily News. That's where I work, by the way, uh, as the Rams beat reporter. Yeah, you need to plug your yeah, stuff, I gotta, man. I got to say that more. I know I said it in the intro, but I got to say it more. But, you know, I didn't have a story this year uh, for, you know, for various de- uh, reasons because, you know, there's a lot of moving parts with the Chargers and the Rams beat. And, like, okay, let's kind of, you know, hit pause there, but I still wanted to do one because I felt like okay, I felt good enough. Okay, I know I only been I only been on the beat one month, but I felt good, so I sent my my final roster to you and Fernando and Danny and Diego just to be my witnesses. And you know, I counted it wrong. I thought it was forty eight out of fifty three, and so I was kind of like, ah, that's whatever. 
uh but who knows you know you know and we if were I was making there, fun of you for that yeah. we're like man you just got there you're making us look bad and i'm like okay but what if i had a couple more weeks extra like i just got there so i was trying to you know make excuses but then i went and i checked today i was like oh it's actually 50 out of 53 uh, i kept counting wrong because of you know three didn't get in and then and three were in so i was kind of like six or five whatever uh but 50 out of 53 is not bad I, for being there for a month you know again you know i got burned with my first four out with uh you know J jay combo um jonah williams and kaira thomas those three guys got in i got those i got those wrong so the three that you know that i had initially was aj curry the rookie tackle uh and the two surprises victor wide receiver jacob harris and outside linebacker chris garrett did not make it so that's where the, the three i got wrong uh so yeah you know i'll take the number though it shows that i maybe i'm watching out there i'm paying attention you know I, i'm doing something right uh I won't beat myself up too much for Chris Garrett and Jacob Harris. Those were big surprises for, for everybody. We all kind of, the, among the beat reporters, assume they're going to make it. And, and we'll get, in, get into it throughout, with those two guys throughout the show. But the one that I, I, I got wrong was definitely A.J. Curry and Jonah Williams. And, and and I started, you know, going off of, like, you know, draft status. I know A.J. Curry was a seventh-round pick as a rookie. And usually when you're a seventh-round seventh pick, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have a whole lot of weight. But then Sean McVay was saying, like, yeah, or safeties, uh, Quentin Lake, a sixth rounder who's, who hasn't played, who's been hurt, and a seventh rounder in Russ Yeast, another safety, like, they're in, they're safe. I'm like, okay, maybe the whole rookie draft class is safe. So I put in AJ Curry, and I'm thinking a lot, a lot of teams like to go with, with nine instead of eight. Eight seems kind of like, you know, a little risky for offensive line. So I think they, I, I felt like teams prefer depth, but there's no question Jonah Williams was playing great. Uh, he looked like a like a, a seasoned veteran out there. He was making plays in the preseason, so that's my bad for giving the rookie uh, too much weight on the draft status. So I'll take the L on that one. But the other two, Chris Garrett and Jacob Harris, we could get into it, Victor. Uh, a lot of people didn't see that one coming. Yeah, no, I and I think you are beating yourself up because we, like we said, like the undrafted guys. You, uh, how are you gonna, you know? predict that like you don't you just don't know like and i get the jacob harris and the and the and the garrett pick because they were both drafted early last year so i mean it's, it's totally understandable but like let's i, I don't want to go too long because i want to be able to get all your thoughts on some of these things so let's let's start with the, the uh undrafted guys since we're talking about that mccutcheon hummel and thomas make the team how are how 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 did how did this happen like let us know from your vantage point how the we knew mccutcheon everybody yeah. fell in love but what about Hummel and thomas yeah you know for for the super bowl to be in, to for being the defending super bowl champions like it, it's interesting that three undrafted rookies made it on this roster like they weren't a lot of you know starting position battles there weren't a lot of open uh roster spots on this stacked roster so it's it's kind of a nice story that these three guys made it in as undrafted rookies and and, and, I'll, and I'll put it this way but not to diminish what they did these guys all earned it but there was four roster spots available because you know i think three were injuries and one was uh suspension bobby brown the defensive tackle he suspended the first six games of the season i think it was because uh you know um uh, is it PDs or you know yeah. performance and yeah, you, drugs? And, and I'm sorry to to come in go here, ahead. but uh, you you talked about this in your story, so make sure you go and read yeah. his stories because he brought all these things up. Go ahead, Gil. Yeah, may, maybe I'm a better writer than I am a talker, so I'm trying to get the, <laughs> the thoughts together and get it going. But yeah, hey, you're four. writing a bunch of stories. <laughs> I just read them, and I'm trying to produce the show, so you're good, man. <laughs> no, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, check it out. Uh, OC Register, LA Daily News. I'm going to keep saying that here on House of Horns. Uh, Victor, yeah. that, that's pretty cool to say, too. But uh, yeah, and then Travion Howard, uh, you know, the inside linebacker, he's still on the, the they call it the non-football injury list. I think it's because he, he got hurt away from the facility, and, and it doesn't really count. Oh. Uh, and then Quinton Lake has been on the pup list for the, the whole summer, so he, he could stay there. Uh, but I think Travion Howard and Quinton Lake have to miss the first four games of the year by being on, starting the season on that list. And then, unfortunately, the rookie Logan Bruss has a season-ending ending injury on the MCL, uh, the torn ACL. So he's already going to start the year on IR. So that created four roster spots in, in, in a sense to to allow uh, uh, a Jake Hummel and a Kier Thomas to get in. And 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 I'll, and I'll start it off this way. You know, I know it might become a long response here, Victor, but 
Lance McCutcheon balled out. He earned yeah. this roster spot. He made it super difficult on the Rams to say, all right, let's get risky here and put them on waivers and hopefully nobody claims them. You couldn't do that because of what he put out on tape in the preseason. This guy's a, a gifted playmaker, wide receiver. Yeah, he needs to work on special teams. Yeah, he has to work on blocking and uh, and, and everything else you got to work on when you're a rookie. So they were not going to get risky with Lance McCutcheon. He forced their hand to keep him on this roster. Two problems, though. Go, go ahead. I was going to, I just want to add, and, and I, I don't, I, I hate to cut you off right here, but I want to be able to promote your story again. You said that he, although he made the team, he's probably going to be a red shirt. So please continue. Yeah, th that that's where the, the problem comes in because he, he was too good to, to try to sneak in through waivers and they're going to go red shirt year for Lance McCutcheon. You're probably thinking, why are they doing that with this guy who clearly could play in the NFL? Yeah, it's preseason, but he's showing it. Why not give him a chance? Why don't give him a crack at it? Uh, he's in a very crowded wide receiver position. Uh, he is pretty much the seventh wide receiver. He got in the last spot. Yeah, you could talk about Ben Skoranek. You even talk about Tutu Adwell, uh, even Brandon Powell. Uh, but those guys that ha have, have earned the role in different ways, Brandon Powell and special teams. Ben Skoranek on special teams and also being reliable. Tutu Atwell, more on the draft pick and more on the speed that you want to utilize eventually. And obviously, you can't compete with Van Jefferson, Allen Robinson, and Cooper Cup. So that's a problem. The other problem is he's not ready to have a role on special teams. He has not carved out a role on special teams. That was always an issue. Like, yeah, this guy could play, but can he do something on special teams? And I think he's still you know, learning that area. He kind of struggled in the first game. He admitted it uh, himself, and he said that, you know, from week one to week two of preseason, that he 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 really focused on that because he knows that was a problem. But then, uh, you know, he he just kept growing and growing as a wide receiver, and they, he just it didn't matter what he was doing on special teams because he was just too good. So he's gonna have to wait his turn, and, and it, you're probably gonna be scratching your head why is he waiting his turn? But those are the two reasons why. Now, Jake Hummel earned a role on special teams. He was the opposite of Lance McCutcheon, you know. And he was making plays, though. I, I think Sean McVay yeah. said that he had the, the preseason record for tackles. Like it was 21 and 22. So he, he was doing his part as a linebacker. But he really did it on special teams, and that's why they kept him. And, and uh, that's why he created his path there. And he's going to play uh, on, on, on game day. Be one of the 48 because he could, he could play special teams. Kira Thomas, he got a, a role because Daniel Hardy, the rookie, He's hurt. They had to put him on the roster because he's not a full season ending guy. So he didn't start the summer on PUP or NFI and he's not going to IR. So the, the tricky thing was like, okay, you got to put him on the roster, the 53 man, oh, and then okay. move him to IR to keep him for four games. Because if you would have started, if they were to try to stash him on, on IR, he, he would have been out for the whole year. So put him on the roster and then place him on, on the, on the IR for four games. So they, the team already knew that. And okay. Kair, we need you uh, as a fourth guy. And, and and not to take that away from it, for, from injury for Kyrie Thomas, he earned that role because he beat Chris Garrett. He's number four, and, and Chris Garrett is not. He's on the outside looking in. So it's funny how these three uh, – I know I, it was very long, but it's funny how these three undrafted rookies made it, but in different ways. They all found a way, and, and that's what you want to do this time of year. Find a way, get in however you can, and make it. Yeah, it doesn't matter, you know, how you make it, man. You just want to be on that roster. I mean, it's hard. I, I, I forget the number of people who don't lost a job, you know, the other day. I mean, it was like 700 and plus players. So and maybe it's higher than that. So, I mean, for, for three un, undrafted guys to make the team, that's huge, especially on a Super Bowl team. Yeah, that's huge. That's, you know, that's very big. The other thing I was going to say, the Patriots do this all the time. Like we, we've seen it. They, if they find players, they'll red shirt them. Of course, they go around some of the loopholes with the rules and, you know, Hey, if, if you can find loopholes and be able to keep some of these guys, go ahead and do it. Especially when you're once again, when you're someone like the Rams and you're loaded with big contracts. So that makes sense. But, uh, let's, let's move on to, uh, our guy uh, Bryce Perkins made the team. So <laughs> why did they keep three quarterbacks, Gilbert? Yeah. So uh, your your theory, Victor, did not work out of Bryce Perkins and and Matthew Stafford. And, and I kind of figured, but 
you know, you, you might be right though down the line when you know when they they need a backup quarterback and it's going to be number two Bryce Perkins because of what he did in August and hopefully it doesn't get to that point for, for I know Rams fans are thinking like what or why, why do we need a number two? Obviously Matthew Stafford is fine, he's playing well, uh, but if it ever gets to that point, I think Bryce Perkins maybe elevated himself to number two. But I I think they just have a lot of trust in John Wolford and and, and you know. He he pretty much went on the slide because they he had a play in that weird Texans game and it's not his fault that the offensive line stunk you know, and right. and he, he didn't want to penalize him for that I felt like I think they don't want to forget what he did before that or what he did the year before that just because of one bad performance from the offensive line so I think the team wanted to be fair and it did not help that he had the finger now injury too like he couldn't even go out there to compete so I think they kind of went off of the experience of John Wolford. And then see what happens later. But you couldn't you couldn't put up Bryce Perkins on waivers. I think uh, there's a lot of teams out there that need a backup quarterback. Uh, you know, there's many teams that you know that don't even have one starting quarterback. They're they're like look at the Seahawks. You know, maybe yeah. maybe the Seahawks got to tr- try to take in Bryce Perkins to compete with a Geno Smith, and you don't want a, ri- a rival team to get him. So uh, I can see why they went there. And yeah, and and that and that's the down, downside of keeping three quarterback. I think Les Need, the GM of the Rams, was saying that. Maybe less than fifty percent of the teams in the NFL don't have three quarterbacks; like they have two, and so that was interesting. Sad to, for me, I, I thought it was a little more. Maybe like you know, I don't know, like twenty-four teams have that, but I guess not. I was way off there, so it is kind of rare. But uh, Bryce Perkins really forced their hand. Yeah, no, I, I was kind of surprised, and not not because I really like what I saw from Bryce Perkins, but I just it just doesn't seem like you really in today's NFL that you should be able to keep two quarter, I mean, three quarterbacks, especially when you have such a big practice. squad. I think I saw a couple of teams, they have two quarterbacks on their practice squad team. Mm. So, I mean, hey, it, the, 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 the Rams know their team, they, they value their quarterbacks and that's, that's great on them. I just, for me, it, it didn't make sense, but like you explained, they, they wanted to keep their three quarterbacks and you know, that's, that's fair. Yeah. And then I guess you can't, you know, it's the hardest position to find in, in, in the NFL. So when you have three, you know, one really good one and two decent ones, why not? It's okay to you know to play it safe in that position. But you know, here we are, another another year for the Rams with three QBs, and Bryce Perkins definitely earned it. Uh, he showed improvement as a pocket passer. He's, he's a weapon with his legs. You know, he could run around. And, and Les Snead was saying that like, hey, I know you're saying that because uh, I'm the one that keeps saying that. Like, I know you're saying that uh, you're seeing improvement from from Bryce Perkins in the pocket, but I think the mobility and what he does with his legs overshadows that because by having that feel in the pocket, you're 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 forcing the defense to play you as a pocket passer, and that opens up the lanes. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm glad I asked here, Les Snead. You're, you're teaching me some football, so that's that's another thing too. They like that the way he commands the pocket, the feel that he has, and he, he he's smart when it comes to should I take off, should I protect the ball, should I throw it. So all that all that all that came into play for Bryce Perkins. Yeah, and I know we need to move on to the practice squad stuff, but I, I, I mean, like I said, like I, if this, this is the first time me like watching the Rams closely, just like you, like super close, and he just stood out. Like there was something, uh, like every time I watched him, even against when he started the whole all the games, like at the beginning and then at the end against the Bengals, he just looked so much better than Wolfer. Now we only saw Wolfer for and a couple, you know, hat like a, a first half, and that was it. But for me, he just Perkins just flashed, and I just I don't know, man. Like like I said, I I I love the way he plays, and you know, he kind of re- he he kind of reminded me of Lamar Jackson in a, in a little way. But uh, let's get to wow. the let's get to let's get to the practice squad. Uh, we saw that they picked up. Jake, Jacob Harris, and they also picked up AJ R. R- Curry. Is that right? Yeah, R- Curry. Um, yeah, the two, yes. the two that I got wrong are uh, back yeah. in the practice squad. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on on the practice squad? Yeah, I'll start. I start off with those two guys, and then I'll get to my surprise person who didn't make it to the practice squad. Uh, Jacob Harris, you know, it, it's kind of like you mentioned with the Patriots taking advantage of the loopholes and the rules, and I think they had a feeling that he's going to go through waivers because. You know, keep in mind that one thing a lot of people forget is like when you claim somebody, they have to go on your 53-man roster. So it kind of makes it complicated uh, and it gives players more of a chance to return to the team they were with for the summer. So I think that, you know, the Rams were saying, okay, if we put McCutcheon or Harris, who has a better chance of making it through waivers? And obviously it was Jacob Harris. And that's what happened. 
and and now they can bring them back to the practice squad, which they did. And now they can utilize the versatility and the experience of Jacob Harris. So I think you mentioned Victor; he's on the exception list. I don't know if that's yeah. something that's new this year, having the two spots. Uh, usually they have like the five protected ones, which is everything kind of shuffled during the COVID era. So I don't know that those th- the the two exceptions are new. I can't remember last year, uh, but I think that means like you know, these guys are protected. You know, they're, they're going to be on your roster. You can I think you can move them up and down a lot uh because there's kind of like a limit like a limit of two or three times you could call up a guy from the practice squad where you're forced to put him on on the roster so there's a bunch of rules there i gotta, I gotta do a better job of figuring that out but going off what les needs said about jacob harris he said yeah like like mccutcheon's on the roster but like he's not even gonna dress on, on game day jacob harris went through waivers went through practice squad and he's gonna play on game day so it was kind of the long way to get on there because he's so valuable on special teams and then they like what he does on special team and then again with the two tight ends thing you know, now you have uh, a Jacob Harris to protect you on, on that sense. I know he's a wide receiver, but he used to play tight end. And then Victor, the other guy was Roger Carter, right? He was on the practice squad tight end. He so. was, yeah, the, 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 the tight end I brought up that I thought maybe could make it if if we, they didn't go with uh, eight receivers. So, yeah, that he was another another one. But, like, before you move on and, and tell me about Roger Carter, uh, I know this is, this is something new for the practice squad. And so – we want to make sure that we both need to learn it too. So I, I just thought that was interesting when I brought yeah. it up about the exception, because you said, well, it, it means that he's probably going to come up at some point during the season if they're going to use him on special teams. The other thing we need to make sure that people know is that you can only dress 48, right? Yeah. 48 yeah. players. Yeah, I think it's a uh, 48, you know, and I, you get it. You get that extra. Usually I think it's 47, but you get that extra spot uh for an offensive lineman i think it's like you get to have like eight dress offensive linemen or something i forget the rule but I, it, it involves an extra spot for the offensive lineman and, and most teams take advantage of that uh keeping which, uh which is which smart. means yeah. that we might see aj or curry the guy you were there just you about to talk about go ahead the, the, the long oh, no, sorry it was roger there. carter sorry yeah, roger, carter. roger carter yeah and, and that kind of goes with the whole two tight ends which bryce perkins uh, I don't want to get too long, but I think Bryce Perkins is a good example for Lance McCutcheon. Bryce Perkins had, had a lot of upside coming out of Purdue, leading receiver in college. Uh, but he had to wait two years for his turn. That could be something for Lance McCutcheon. But now Bryce Perkins, who didn't play at all for two years, is the number two tight end. But you need some depth behind uh, Tyler Higby and uh, Bryson, Bryson Hopkins. Uh, so that's where uh, Jacob Harris and Roger Carter come in. Now, A.J. Curry could be the extra lineman that they need. Uh, some flexibility, but it'll be kind of tough for AJ Curry because Bobby Evans, uh, AJ Jackson, Tremaine, and Trim, they're very versatile who could, who could play inside, outside. So it might kind of, that's why they also, and also I'm kicking myself, Victor, because for about a week, I kept saying they're going eight, I, eight offensive linemen because those three guys are very versatile. So that kind of creates roster spots for the, for the eight wide receivers that I was assuming for. I was trying to create roster spots. And then at the end, I was like, ah, now they're going AJ Curry. And that's where I'm kicking myself, but he's back on, on the practice squad. Now, the guy who didn't make it, Victor, surprise, mm-hmm. surprise, yes, Chris Garrett, who yes. I was thinking about already not make, putting him on my 53-man roster because he was kind of in the doghouse. He had the groin injury for two weeks. He didn't really play. And then he kind of flashed the potential in that uh, game against the Bengals. Yeah. Like, he, I think he had like a tackle for loss or maybe a sack. He was bursting off the line, the line of scrimmage, and you saw the athleticism, the speed. Yeah, he flashed. So I'm like, okay, yeah. then I think he earned it. That's all they needed to do. He got the reminder, and it didn't work out. So, I, but I think Lesney was saying like, yeah, man, those two weeks where he didn't practice that cost him, and th- and that created a, an opportunity for Kira Thomas. And Sean McVay was really raving about Kira Thomas. Like Chris Garrett flashed, but so did he, Thomas, in that final game. And that kind of shows you like these final games in the preseason that we're all trying to move on from. They help, and they help guys like that was a competition that we they weren't really paying attention to. But it, it does kind of say a lot that Chris Garrett didn't make the practice squad. I don't know what happened there. Maybe some behind the scenes things because he was kind of an, uh, you know, like a, a developmental project last year where he flashed in the preseason, didn't do much, you know, because of COVID reasons, some injuries last year. He only appeared in one game and maybe missing more more weeks in training camp just kind of became too much of a headache and they ran out of patience and they moved on. So 
We'll see. We'll see where he lands. But he, I don't think he got picked up at all on waivers. Yeah, I was gonna say it's kind of maybe they were right because he didn't get picked up anywhere, and they didn't bring him back on the practice squad. So, yeah, I know we're running a little long, kind of like uh, Game of Thrones and uh, House of the Dragon, dude. So let's get let's get to why we're here. We're here. We're gonna get to preview the Bills game. So you know, welcome to Bills Week. Um, so we need to start getting ready for our, our prep. You've, you're you're starting to write some stories uh, on the Bills. And, you know, do you want to kind of give them a, uh, the people so, a hint of some of the stories you're working on? Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people already moved on the Bills Week. Bills Week and here we are giving introductions and bios about ourselves here, Victor, uh, giving us talking about ourselves on House of Horns and then talking about the 53-man roster. They've moved on. So they want this, and I'll give you kind of a sample of how it's going to be for Bill's Week. Uh, this video dropping Thursday. So the team will be practicing Friday, which is technically their Monday of a game week, so not anything too crazy. They'll have a day off Saturday, which is kind of the standard Tuesday day off, and then they'll come back Sunday being their Wednesday uh monday being their thursday tuesday being their friday so those three days sunday monday tuesday is gonna be their, their, their three uh heavy days to prepare for josh allen like it's gonna be a, a a lot of long days trying to worry about josh allen because the last time we saw josh allen he was on fire he was going toe to toe with patrick mahomes and the only reason that that josh allen did not continue in the playoffs because he chose wrong was it tails on the coin flip yeah. or what so uh <laughs> And we it, almost got a, a rule change because of it. That's yeah. how much power he yeah, had. Yeah, that's how that's how good he was playing that playoff game that they wanted to change the coin flip rule. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a, a long preparing week for uh, Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator of the Rams. But it helps when you have Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald on your side. So it's going to be a great matchup, Victor. But, yeah, uh, look out for my stories. I'm going to have a big story on Matthew Stafford. I'm going to have a big story on Aaron Donald. I'm going to talk about the Von Miller return because Leonard Floyd was talking trash about Von Miller. I know in a friendly way, but they've been they've been chirping about it from the distance. So uh, it's going to be a lot of matchups. Notre Dame is white for the Bills, so it could be good things for Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson. So all these matchups, all these storylines for a week one season opener, which feels too good for week one, uh, Victor. It feels like a Super Bowl preview that we don't deserve in week one. Uh, but here we are out of the gates. Should be a, should be a fun week. Yeah, I couldn't believe when we got the matchup. Like when they announced it, I was like, "Wait, they really gave us Bill Bills Rams?" Like I, because usually it's like, they, like last year it was the Cowboys and the Bucks, and you kind of know why they did they do that is because of the Cowboys are popular. But I wasn't expecting this. Like when they they dropped this, I was like, "Okay, all, all right, NFL, I, I see, I, I see you now." But you know, I'm I'm glad we're getting this, and I can't wait. Like we're when this drops, we're one week away. Like, yeah, that, you know, that's like, what we planned. We want to get people excited, like a tease. Like, watch House of Horns, subscribe, yeah. like it, comment, and then count down the days to Buffalo uh, Rams Thursday night football. Yeah, like I, I can't. Like I said, I know I keep saying, like I'm, I'm, I can't wait to watch that game and and break it down with you, and then stay stay with us after the post game like you said earlier we're gonna talk about it we're gonna try to get 10 or 15 minutes from him and we can't wait like it, what else what else what else do you need from us like we we're, we got you covered every which way on rams content and victor before we head out i'm gonna say i'm a little concerned about you on sundays man you're gonna have a lot of football to cover and then you have house of the dragon to keep up with man are you gonna have enough time to do all that you know I know I gave my review of House of Dragon the first two episodes, but I know you're dying to kind of say some words about it. Yeah, no, I have a lot of content coming up. I have Cobra Kai. I have uh, House, House of, of the Dragon. I have Lord of the Rings, who I, I have to watch because of my fiance. Uh, I, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. I'm like you. Um, so I, I I have to watch that too, and there's there's so much content coming out which I love. So yes, it's gonna be you know the first two episodes getting back to House of the Dragon have been great. I can't wait for the rest of the season, but yeah, it's gonna be awesome and to watch all this stuff and get to break it down with you. That's the great part of it. Yeah, I'm just glad we planned this perfectly. You know, House of the Dragon, House of Horns uh you know line up together on sundays and so watch house of horns and then and watch uh, house of the dragon so victor this was fun 
uh i, I know it was uh, the first episode debut something we've been holding in for a while and we're i'm excited that we finally get it out there uh you know I, I've, I've been uh you know just you know waiting for the weeks for preseason to be over to finally get into regular season mode so yeah check out our content for house of horns it's coming up uh i think we're gonna release tuesday of game week or week one for the preview so check out the preview episode of bills rams and uh yeah i'm on to the regular season victor you know you you know you you got that sign up so i'll let you have the floor on that note ya nos vamos pues vámonos